What's up, my friends? This is Einstein, aka Open Source Code Gangster, here again with another tutorial in Proteus. So, today we are going to be talking about selecting simulatable components in the Proteus development environment. As you can see from my first introduction video, I showed you how to place the components on the board. So, I'm going to continue from there. So, the very best of simulatable components they follow. The normal path with your passive components the resistors the capacitors the inductors and stuff those are the most components that you're going to be using in most of your circuits so today i'm going to be showing you which components are best to be used for simulations in proteus so i'm going to start and, and show you the led so in proteus you go and uh, click on p and then you type led so you're going to get many variations but the leds that you're going to be using for simulations they should be active under the library you should see an active sign so i'm going to select a green led led green active you double click when you double click the pro the, the the component displays on the list of devices that you can access then i'm going to choose another red led i double click as you can see it's not placed under the list of devices that i can i can click so when I want to place the component on the board, I come back to my list of devices, I, I click on the green LED, I click on the screen, as you can see, the LED is there. If I want to edit any voltages about the LED, I double click on the LED, then as you can see, the forward voltage of the LED is 2.2 volts. If I want to make it 3, I just type 3, the full drive current is 10 milliamp, the breakdown voltage is 4 volts. All of these settings can be edited about the LED. So that's all on how to use the LED. So next, I'm going to talk about the voltage regulator. Most circuits, there are 12 volt circuits and 12 volt circuits. So we're going to be using the 7805 for 5 volt simulations and 780, 7812 for 12 volts. So you go and type 7805. Uh, the system will search for you. So we have 78L05 and we have 7805. As you can see on the description, it said 5 volts fixed 1 amp. So we're going to be using this one amp and also you can see the pcb view if, if you have seen the component before you know its orientation it's different from the l click the l you see it looks like a smaller transistor because it's got 100 milliamps so you double click as well you edit your list of components then we go and search for the 7812 7812 as you see again it's now list, listed on the list of devices and next i'm going to talk about the resistor so for the resistor, there's a generic component that you use. It's called the res. You can use it for simulating 1 watts, 2 watts, 3 watts, up to 10 watts. That's why you like using this one because you won't have to edit too much. It will be able to simulate. But you have to do your calculations on the end to know the amount of resistance, the amount of capacity, the, the, the amount of uh, wattage that you need for each circuit. You need to do your mathematics. So you go on, re on, on res. As you can see, it's written in a g generic resistor symbol. You double click is there this is a simulatable component as well so for capacitors you just type cap you don't have to type the entire name capacitor no so when you type cap the system is searching we have the generic this one is a simulatable i've added it then we have the elect electrolytic capacitor it's a simulatable component as well with the polarized capacitor simulatable component as you can see these all these are simulatable components for capacitors i've never used the, the variable capacitor and the uh, capacitor the preset uh, trimmer capacitor i'm not sure if it's simulatable but for for these ones but we can try let me try and put the presetable and the variable capacitor so that we can try to check if it's simulatable so for the for the components that i added the resistor it's simple just go on the board you click you place it there you double click it if you want to edit the value maybe it's a 300 ohm resistor you just go and type 300 ohm here and okay or it's a 1k k resistor you just go and type 1k and you type click okay that's about the resistor so for the capacitor it's the same symbol you choose a capacitor you place it here you want to change the value on the capacitance double click on the capacitor then you, you go and type 10 it's now 10 nanofarads or then you click okay or you want to put 100 microfarads you go you type 0 0 u it's now microfarad always try to use the notation, notation where u is a small letter and f is a capital letter when you are representing the capacitor values 
so let's test the presetable capacity and check if you can set the preset you double click here check as you can see this one is very difficult to simulate so i would say it's a non-simulatable component because you cannot change the parameters now i think you can see the difference between simulatable components and non-simulatable components so next i'm going to talk about the transformer you go and type trans you wait for it it's searching or you can write transformer as you can see we have the transformer with single primary two insulated so it's simulatable as well but today i'm just going to talk about the simple transformer so i'm going to double click the transformer and place it here then next uh, i'm going to add operational amplifier uh, I, i'm used to using the lm3885 this one is a good simulatable component so i'm going to to sorry let me search for it properly 385 Let me let, let's go on, on op amps and, and search manually. So we have our operational amplifiers. Let me see if I made a typo. So that we can check for the for the operational amplifier. It's LM3. Oh sorry, it's 358. So it's 358N. So we double click. So as you can see, it's now on the part of listed of devices. So I'm going to place the components next, then we I will show I'll explain them. Then we can go on a voltage source. Just just type uh, for for DC. It's it's uh so it's V source, cause the voltage source. So as you can see, we have a DC voltage source. It's got this symbol. I double click. It's there. Then for 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 AC source, it's V sign. Cause AC is a sine wave. As you can see, this is the the V sign. I double click. It's there. Then I'm going to show you the current source. It's I sign for AC as you can see it's sine wave AC current source for, 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 for DC uh, it's a, there's a, another current source I'm going to show you as well then for a toggle switch if you want to toggle there is a small toggler that you can use for simulating if you want to toggle you see it's toggle library it's active it means it's, it's an active component then we have a button call it a push button that you can use for simulating as well so as you can see it's written active i double click it plays on the list of devices then we have a switch you just go and type switch for switching on and off as you can see from the analog primitive switch it's here so i'm going to look where there is the gray which means is the item that i search for it's active as well i double click it's now placed on the list of devices then there is uh, a buzzer if you want to simulate a sound in Proteus, then you can use this active buzzer. It uses the sound card, so it will, it will be outputting the sound via the sound card. As you can see, it says outputs via sound card. It uses the speaker of the laptop to, 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 to sound the buzzer. Then for, for transistors, as you know, most people like using their transistors. So there is the BC547. This is a BJT transistor for mainly, mainly for switching operations. So this is the one. Then there is also my favorite, the 2N3904. It's one of the best transistors for switching. It's another one here. You double click and it's here. Then some people like the 2N2222. So I know it's, it's a good one also for switching. And some use the 22A. It's a UHF microwave NPN transistor. But the 222 without the, the A is just a low power, high frequency bipolar transistor. We can use it for switching as well. Then we can also use the relay. As you can see, this kind of relay, the active one, is the only relay that is simulatable. I double click and it's there. Then there is a motor. If you want to uh, uh, test something that says the load in it, there's a simple DC motor module. This module, the active one, it's simulatable. I double click and it's there. So now I'm going to start to be explaining from where I left off. So we left off uh, at the um, transformer. So for a transformer, I had added it already. It's here. I double click. It's here. This is our transformer. If I want to edit the parameters of the transformer as before, I double click on the transformer. There is primary inductance, secondary inductance, coupling factor, primary DC resistance, and secondary DC resistance. I'm going to do another video where I'm going to show you how to calculate these uh, primary inductance and secondary inductance values. 
so that you can set the output voltage uh, on the primary comparing with the input voltage but here is what you can edit to make sure that the, the output is desired according to your specifications so this is for a this is a simulatable transformer for an operational amplifier uh, i added the lm358 so this is the lm358 uh, usually we never edit much about this one because it comes uh, as it is and it's simulatable the package is simulatable just place it and you connect it according to the operational amplifier rules now we go to a voltage source we're going to start with the dc it's v source i put it here as you can see it's one volt if i want to output more than one volt i double click here then i get to here it's one volt then if i want 12 volts output i just type 12 and okay as you can see the voltage is now 12 here so it's now a 12 volts it's now a dc source outputting 12 volts and it's simulatable for ac there is the v sign i double click it and it's here if i want to edit it i double click on it as you can see we have the amplitude so the amplitude if we want to get a vrms of um, 230 volts the the the, the v's uh, the peak the vp or the peak voltage will be around 360 volts for us to get a vrms of 230 but for for basic simulations you can just type 230 as a demonstration then frequency is usually 50 hertz as it is like this I just put the v here then i type okay so it's already configured to generate uh two, three, 230 volts at 50 hertz so after this i'm going to show you the current source i put the i sign let me look for the i sign here it is this is the i sign it's a current source so you as well you, you generate the current at a certain frequency because it's it's a it's ac current you put 50 hertz maybe i want 5 amps and i just type my amplitude of 5 amps this is not uh the rms current but it's uh it's uh, the peak to peak current so after this i'm going to show you about the toggle as i had said if you want if you if you are going to create something that needs toggling you're going to be using this small thing so when you click on the small icon it goes to one which means the level is high when you click on the small item it goes to zero the level is low so if you are making a digital circuit let's say you want to simulate high and low conditions without having to make a lot of sensors you can use this toggle switch to demonstrate your simulation then for the button the button is usually self-explanatory you just place it here so you you click it then it latches you release it then it releases if you want to permanently latch it you go and you click on the small uh red like button let me zoom in let me zoom in on the area as you see this one you click sorry you, you click then you click here it's very difficult to click after but like this you latch this you it doesn't latch but this is the red item that i was referring to you uh if you want to latch it permanently you zoom out right then when i click like this sorry let me change the instrument when i click like this i think it doesn't want me to to do it while it's it's zoomed in like like the way it is so i'm going to go back to my first zoom level then i'll click it as you see it's now responding it's latching and it's unlatching then after this i'm going to show you the switch with the switch just place it like this and same with the previous button you click on the arrows click on the plus it latches you click on the minus it unlatches then i'm going to talk about the buzzer for the buzzer as i told you before it just sounds so this is your buzzer you don't have to edit anything about the buzzer unless if you want to change the frequency output the sample rate the load resistance this resistance is in ohms the operating voltage if you want to operate it at five volts you come on the 12 you you put a five if you want to 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 to, to simulate a better load or maybe it's a four ohm a output load uh, if you are making an an audio amplifier uh, and your your amplifier is set to support a four ohm or eight ohm output you edit here if it's an eight ohm you put an eight then this is the sound sample rate you edit here if you also have a buffer time that you want you can also edit here for your sound card or the, uh, the buzzer if it's in real life that will be your speaker so i'm going to show you the relay this is a relay and uh, this is a simulatable relay from here you change the coil resistance if you want to make the coil resistance less 
I can change it here and make it 120. If I also want to make the component voltage to 5 volts, if I, I can use the same as a 5 volts relay or a 12 volts relay, I just edit it as it is. Then next, I go to my motor. As I saw you, if you want to demonstrate a, a load, a DC load, I, I usually use this motor. So for, for, for this motor, I just place it like here. Place the motor here. I double click it. Then I can edit the, the voltage. If I want to demonstrate a 3 volts load, then I, I just, but this is DC voltage. If I want to demonstrate a 24 volts load, I can put a 24 volts load. Then I click OK. Then I will connect it to my visa, to my uh, V source, which is a DC source. And the motor will run. I'll just put a small demonstration, and I'll try to connect uh, the motor here. Like I'll, I'll check to see if it, if it can simulate, if it can simulate, because I have all those components on the on the workspace. So I want to check to see if if it's able to simulate, because I put my 12 volts here. As you can see, this is 12 volts, and on the motor I put a 24 volts. Let's see if it will work. So I'm going to try and simulate. It's not going to work because it's saying there's a spice, there's a VC somewhere. Oh, this one, yeah, that non simulatable component. You see, these are the kind of errors that you get when you have non simulatable components saying simulation failed due to a partition analysis. No module. So, this component, this preset capacitor, if you remember the one that we added earlier, it's got a non simulatable component. So I'm going to delete it. So, I'm, go I'm going to retry simulating again. As you can see, my simulation is running, my motor is running. Because all the other components, they are simulatable. So we are not getting any errors. But it's slower. So let me change the, the, the voltage to a 24 volts. I'll try simulating the motor again. As you can see, the speed of the motor is just demonstrated. It has gone faster because I have increased the, the voltage from the, from the source. Because these motors can run on a low voltage. They'll be spinning the rest per minute to be very low. But on a, on a higher voltage, they'll be spinning on a higher rest per minute so this is my my tutorial on uh, selecting simulatable components in proteus thank you very much for your time and uh, please like the the channel uh, blistech electronics and also last but not least at blistech electronics we're going to be opening a shopping cart where you can get most of these components that i have put out on this simulation from our store we are located at number 97 blackway drive Belvedere Harare uh, we do research and development and uh, also we sell electronic components for all kind of projects we do consultancy on projects and support on projects we have we do a servicing of equipment and machinery